Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we are going to be adding yet another page into this beautifully expanding encyclopedia by examining the Bane Bane no Mi. The Bane Bane no Mi is a paramecia type fruit that allows its user to turn parts of their body into springs. It was consumed by a certain Bellamy and first showcased during the Jaya arc. The fruit takes its name rather simply from the Japanese word for spring, which is bane. And rather predictably, this resulted in the ever-reliable Funimation translating it as the spring spring fruit. However, we do have a nice little deviation from the Viz manga translation, who decided that boing boing fruit was an entirely effective approach to naming it. Now sadly, I must point out that four kids did not make it to dubbing Jaya, thank god. So from here on out, I won't be able to make any gags at their expense, but you know what, in this situation I think Viz has done just fine. Boing, boing. Now what I will say initially is that this fruit certainly puts a spring in your step. However, the extent of exactly how the user's body can be changed into springs is somewhat unknown. As in the series, it is generally used to change full limbs and in certain cases, hips. The latter case leads me to believe that this fruit does work like most paramecias and so the user should be able to make minute changes like turning an individual finger into a spring or even go so far as to transform into a single giant spring. And an initial reaction to that might be to think of the user as becoming a human slinky. And wow, that sounds pretty cool, yeah? Slinkies are fun, right? Wrong. I mean, yeah, they're fun for all of 10 seconds when you first get them until they inevitably become tangled after the mildest of uses. But then your slinky is one giant mess and you just start wondering why you even got a slinky in the first place because it's the exact same thing that happened to the last six slinkies you had and just, ugh. In any case, springs are quite different to slinkies anyway. And what the user of the Bane Bane no Mi seems to be able to turn into are your run of the mill compression springs. And they have a disgusting amount of utility being used in all sorts of machinery, electronics, toys, and even pens. Not a lot of utility that can be easily accessed by the user of the Bane Bane no Mi though because springs are generally most useful as a small component of something greater, whereas what we have here is just springs, springs for days. With that said, this fruit certainly does have its uses, and it bestows the user with two key abilities, the first of which being incredible mobility. Transforming one's legs into springs will allow you to jump higher than any high jump champion, and further than any long jump extraordinaire. With repeated bouncing, this makes travel incredibly fast, albeit somewhat dangerous, because rather annoyingly, once the user of the Bane Bane no Mi has chosen to invoke their springy goodness, they are completely at the mercy of the propulsion of the spring until they are brought to an abrupt halt by something large and heavy. And I feel like a common example of this for the average person would be slamming into a wall or something equally as unpleasant. But having said that, this fruit is almost entirely dependent on hard physical surfaces to make full use of its abilities. In an environment with any sort of soft or uneven surfaces, like bushland, snow, or maybe even a ball pit, this fruit is going to be pretty difficult to use, which is very bad because generally when consuming a devil fruit, you'd want to be able to use it in almost any situation rather than needing a specific specific environment. But once said environment has been secured, then the user can engage in the second major advantage of the Bane Bane no Mi, which is access to an incredible amount of additional force. Granted, this factor is mostly applicable to those who are combat inclined, but if that's you, then it results in an exceptional world of devastating power granted to the user. And for example, the most basic method one can use to achieve this is by turning your legs into springs and then just launching yourself straight at a highly unfortunate target. However, that strategy comes with one huge disadvantage, which is that after invoking your springy glory, you are launched on a linear path, which an opponent could easily read and counter. But luckily, the fruit can also be used in a more precise and versatile manner by, say, turning the area between a user's hand and their shoulder into a spring and attacking with a mighty punch. In fact, this particular attack is very similar to that of using the Gomu Gomu no Mi to punch, actually, which is the fruit wielded by Bellamy's one true hero, Luffy. But speaking of Bellamy, let's take some time to discuss how this hyena lookalike wields the power of the Bane Bane no Mi. And I have to say, it's mostly how you'd expect with the descriptions I've given so far, except that Bellamy has taken things a step further with his signature technique known as Spring Hopper. For this move, Bellamy makes use of his surroundings by constantly bouncing from one spot to another, increasing the speed with every bounce and therefore the force of the eventual attack. Following the time skip, Bellamy even combines this technique with Ama Mataki, but the results, were, well, they were the same on both occasions. It's a great technique against rookie pirates, I'm sure, but all but useless against anybody with a bit of strength and a general idea of what they're doing. But where this fruit may have some potential is in the form of an awakening. One of the biggest concerns I have with this fruit is the idea of bouncing yourself with force greater than that which you are prepared for. So theoretically, being able to change the environment around you into spring-like structures could put an opponent at that exact severe disadvantage, as well as allow the user to control their opponent
opponent's movement to some degree by strategically angling the springs. Once again though, a competent opponent will more than likely just use this force to their advantage instead. Access to a springy environment also negates one of the original drawbacks of the fruit which was entirely reliant on geographical conditions. So whatever the case, there is a sliver of potential to awakening this fruit, but even that idea is admittedly slightly underwhelming. Some other miscellaneous things to consider when becoming a spring human. As a spring man, you may or may not be subject to the annoying noises that springs make when contracting. So if you're not a fan of the old squeaky mattress sound, then well, this fruit may not be for you. Speaking of though, after having consumed this fruit, it should be entirely possible for a person to stick a large piece of foam on either side of themselves in order to literally become a mattress. Why would you want to do this? Look, I don't really know, but I'm sure there's someone out there with that exact kink. In conclusion, to me, the Bane Bane no Mi seems kind of like a trampoline. As a kid, you see one at a friend's house and you're like, damn, that would be super cool to have. I'd use it all day, every day. And then if you're lucky enough to actually get one, then it gets boring almost instantly. I really do love the idea of the fruit and I certainly wouldn't say no to eating it. I'm just not sure that I'd get the use out of it that I would get with many other devil fruits. And with that, we are going to commit the Bane Bane no Mi to the devil fruit encyclopedia. Next week, we are going to be highlighting one of the more infamous fruits in the series, the stringy, stringy goodness that is the Ito Ito no Mi. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. Also, do check out my Teespring store if you're interested in shirts, hoodies, and other miscellaneous items, with the proceeds going directly to support the channel as well. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the Bane Bane no Mi. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.